Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to UV unwrap the cup we made in the last part using Maya's 3D Cut and Sew tool. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right in. All right, so here is our cup from the last part. And before we unwrap this, let's make a duplicate. So select the cup, and I'm going to open up the channel box. And you can see it has all this history, including the last um, smooth we did. So if we press T on the keyboard, um, drop that sub subdivision down to zero, and then we'll make a duplicate. So Control D to duplicate that. We'll open up the outliner, and we'll rename it. And the reason why I'm duplicating it is that the mesh is much more reasonable and we can use it for other projects or some other aspect of even this project. Um, call it, call it, I'm going to call it Cup Original. All right, and then press H to hide that. And we'll select this cup and we'll bring that subdivision back up, right? That smooth level back up to one. And now we can delete all this history and also freeze this transformation. So. Click on this one to delete the history and then freeze transformation. Then we just need to name this as well. We'll call this um, cup mesh. All right, I can close the outliner now. And now let's unwrap this. I'm gonna show you how I would unwrap this um, using a very cool tool that Maya has. Um, it won't be a UV basics tutorial. I think there's a lot of stuff out there already on that. But if you need me to um, make something and explain further, leave some comments down below. All right, I'm gonna open up our UV editing workspace. So if you go up here to workspace, um, go down to UV editing and click on that. Here's our cup and here is the original cylindrical projection, which doesn't do us any good. Um, so I'm gonna select the cup, I'm gonna go up here to UV and I'm gonna give it a camera-based projection. So I'm gonna do this a little bit different. Um, click on that one, and then that gives us, gives us a UV projection based on the camera. However, that also doesn't do us much good, but um, it's a start, so we need this. Um, so select the object, and for now, I'm gonna go back into my workspace. You may need to go back into um, Maya Classic or your own workspace if you have one. All right. So here is our cup, and the tool that I was talking about is called the, what's it called? The 3D Cut and Sew tool. Um, click on that, and how this works is if you click on an edge and drag, it'll give you a cut along that edge. If you hold down um, Control and drag, you can sew that up. So it's basically creating seams for your UV. Um, if you click on an edge, hold down shift and double click another edge along that same loop, you can um, provide a, a cut along that loop. And then if you hold, hold down control and double click, then that will um, sew that up. And then anywhere where there's an edge loop, if you double click, it'll cut along that loop. I'm just going to undo that. So yeah, that's essentially how the 3D cut and sew tool works. And now I'm gonna put some cuts in here and explain what I'm doing along the way. So um, right at the handle here, I want the cut to be where the handle meets. I'm essentially going to put cuts anywhere where it's a little bit less conspicuous. So I'm cutting there, I'm double clicking here as well. And then I know that we'll need to unfold this later. So I'm going to put a cut right in the middle of the interior of that handle. And yeah, so let's see here. Let's cut there. I'm just making sure that I didn't accidentally erase that. Okay. And then I'm going to put a cut in the bottom of the bowl right here. I think here works fine. And on the bottom here of the bowl, so the exterior, I'm going to put a cut right here. That should be fine right there. And then at the top where the lip of the bowl is, because it's so thin, I can probably put a cut right in the middle, right there. And that's great, but we'll need to unfold the interior and the exterior. So the interior is easy. We can just put a cut anywhere along 
any of these um, edges. So I'm gonna put a cut right there. And then the exterior, I'm gonna put the cut right where the handle meets. So putting it one there, and I'll also need to separate up here and below here as well. All right, so now we pretty much have all the cuts we need. I'm gonna open up the UV editing workspace again. So this um, one right here, and I'm pressing Q to go back into selection mode. I'm going to, to the object selection and I'm selecting our object. Here we go. And it looks like we really haven't done anything, but if you hover over the UV editing window, hold down the right mouse button, go to your shells, select on a shell, these are all cut and separated for us now. Sometimes if, you, if um, it looks like it's still attached, you have to go back here and make the cuts that are necessary, but we pretty much provided all the cuts it needed. So now we can select all our shells, and under your UV toolkit, um, if this window isn't available or it's not there for some reason, just go up to Tools, Show UV Toolkit. But for now, I'm gonna open up the UV Toolkit and under unfold, that this tab here, open that up and just click unfold. And then what Maya will do will be, will unfold all your shells for you. Yeah. And then if you go to arrange and layout, we can orient these shells as well. So it's a little bit easier to um, see. There you go. And now what I wanna do is make sure that all these shells have the same textile density. So I'm gonna close, uh, unfold for now, close, a range and layout, and I'm gonna open up the transform. And if you scroll down um, on the transform tab, at the bottom, you can uh, adjust the textile density. So I'm gonna select any of these shells and get its textile density. Then what I'm going to do is select all the shells and set the textile density. And now these all have the same textile density. And what why that's useful for us is that if we turn on the UV checker, checker, I should say, um, all these squares are gonna be roughly the same size. There is gonna be a slight, not really an issue for an object like this, right? You can see that um, these shells have a curve to them. Um, whenever possible, it's nice to straighten shells, but for this object, it's fine. And I'll, um, we'll, sh we'll have objects in the future where I'll, where I'll have curved shells and I'll show you how to straighten those shells as well. But for this cup, it should be fine, All right? And turn this off and then let's lay out these shells so I'm gonna go to these shells we're almost done by the way so select these shells go to modify under layout go to the option box and what I'm gonna do is go to edit reset this for now and I want to give Maya the option to rotate the shells so I'll click that for texture map size the texturing program will determine that so we don't have to worry about it um, but if you want to adjust it for yours, you can. Um, for the shell padding, for texturing, I think a shell padding of four to eight pixels is fine. I'm gonna give it four. And for the tile padding, I'm gonna give it like two pixels. And then click layout. And then yeah, our UV shells have been laid out for us. So I'm just gonna minimize this window a little bit. This is what it looks like and I can close the UV toolkit as well. And now we just have to, um, now we're pretty much done. The next part is making a light map, um, a UV for the light map. So in the game engine, the game engine uses um, a separate UV channel to bake lights and game engines often can um, make their own UVs for the light map, but it's always good to make your own. So we're gonna do that, or at least learn how to do that. Okay. Okay, so select your object. Right now, there's not enough space between these shells for um, baking light maps because the light is gonna bleed over into other shells. The reason why we kept the space minimal is to maximize, um, get a best practice to maximize um, space. So right now, you would, you, we can move these shells around, but um, not without affecting the textile density, because what I can see right now is this shell, from end to end, it's using the maximum space. So if we scaled everything, um, it would probably affect um, the other shells, right? So for texturing, this shell is fine. Um, 
how we could maximize this space more is that if this object was sharing a material with another object, then you could have other shells in the same space. But for now, we just have the one object. So let's select this object and um, make a UV for the light map. So go up here to UV sets, and under copy UV set, UVs to a, a UV set, go to there, and then copy into a new UV set. And what that does is, I should have went to the option box. Let me just undo that for you. Um, okay, so select the object, UV sets, copy to a new UV set, UV set, click that, and I've already done it before, so I named it light map UV. Click apply and close. So now if you have your object selected, and you go to here, you have a separate UV channel, and that one will be used for the light maps. So click on that one, and now we just need to space these shells out a bit more. So I'm holding, I'm gonna select all the shells first, and I wanna lay them out again. So I'm gonna go modify, layout, and for this one here, I wanna give it more padding. So I'm gonna do 16 for the shell padding, so between the shells, and it also needs tile padding as well. So when you're um, creating a UV for light maps, you wanna give it tile padding. Now we, we click layout, and now you can see we have a lot more space, right? What I would do is, even now, I'd probably just give it even a bit more space just, just, just to be sure, right? Maybe move some of these um, up a little bit. We could even rotate this one. So I'm holding down J, rotating it this way. Just so that we maximize um, the space. Or not maximize space, but ensure that there's enough um, space so that it doesn't bleed. Because sometimes 16 isn't enough when you're doing um, light map baking on low levels, low settings. All right, so now this is all se um, um, separated. Spread out is what I was, um, the word I was looking for. And we are done. We have a UV for the light map and a UV for the texturing, right? And I'm just gonna go back to the regular workspace and go back to object mode. And now we can go into here Go to the channel box. We do have some history that we need to delete, so we can just delete all that history, and we are done. All right, guys, hopefully now you can see how easy the UV unwrapping process can be, and also how you can create light maps for your own games. Um, we'll be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff in future videos, so uh, if you have any questions, just post them down below, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, we will see you in the next one.